Hey guys, uh, I found a new Wiimote slash Pro Controller option recently. This is a legitimate driver that actually will let you use the controllers as just a generic PC controller. There's no other software you have to run, nothing like that. Uh, this was developed by this gentleman as his bachelor thesis in college. He's continued working on it since, and it seems to be pretty good. I haven't installed it yet. I was going to install it now and test it out and see how it does. Uh, first thing you have to do is download the driver package, which currently there are two separate ones. There's one for a gamepad, and then if you want to use your Wiimote as a mouse, there's a separate driver. In the future, they may be merged into one, but for now, we're just going to worry about the gamepad driver. I've already got it downloaded. Oh, and there's a couple things here as far as compatibility. Uh, the current versions don't work with GTA 5. He has a specific different version listed here to download. And it is also completely incompatible with the Toshiba Bluetooth stack. So those of you that were having problems with that, that's not an issue because you can't use it. Those of you that do have the Toshiba Bluetooth stack, all you need to do is uninstall your Toshiba software and let Windows reinstall the standard Microsoft Bluetooth drivers. I've got them installed here. As you can see, it just pops up the default Windows Bluetooth devices. I've also uninstalled all of my other remote software just to ensure that there's no conflicts with any of that. The other thing that you have to do to use this, which is primarily why I won't be using it beyond this video, is you have to run Windows in test mode. As you can see down here in the corner, I'm already in test mode. Uh, to do that, you need to, you have a couple options. You can do it one time through the advanced boot menu options right here. Or you can permanently do it through a command line. Uh, also, if you're running Windows 8 or Windows 10 on a UEFI BIOS, you'll have to disable secure boot. I will put a link to my video on how to do that in the description. Uh, but that's just an extra step you'll have to do. Uh, which I'm on a UEFI BIOS, and I've got it disabled for this and another video I'm going to be doing. Anyway, let's get this installed. Now, I have... Uh, talked with him briefly in his comments on the page here, he would like to get, the reason you have to run in test mode is because he can't officially sign the driver, he doesn't own a signing certificate. He wants to, and he is considering using Kickstarter or something to fund payment for it. Uh, I followed him on Twitter, so if he does initiate that, I will add links in the description to Donate to that if you want, which I certainly will, because it would nice, be nice to have a system-level driver to use my Wii controllers on the computer instead of having to run third-party homebrew software that may or may not work properly. Uh, this does support Nunchuck, Classic Controller, Wii U, and Wii U Pro Controller. So, you know, all of your Wii controllers should work. Uh, there's also, I believe, balance board support because there's something in here, bug 
and guitar support. So this is a really well-rounded solution. But the driver is installed. All we should have to do now is get the controller connected. And I will test a Pro Controller and a Wiimote. Make sure it's seeing the driver properly. When we go into the properties, we should see some more information. So we will open up Device Manager and not the right property. It comes up as Wemo device, so I'm guessing that that's working. Like I said, this is, oh, here it is. These look like Windows 8 properties dialogs, so it's entirely possible. That is looks different than it does on Windows 10. So there's really only one way to test this, and that's to load up a game and see if it works. Okay, so sorry for the cut. I had to make some adjustments to the game and get things set up and tested. I found that with the turning on this, for some reason using the analog stick, didn't allow me to turn fully, which didn't allow me to drift or anything. So I remapped turning to the D-pad and looking with the right stick wasn't working either. I don't know if it's something with the driver or I need to or tweaking, or if there's some sensitivity control that I need to find. But all the buttons are working, and I will play a race here real quick to show you how well it works.
Okay, so that was split second with the controller. Uh, it plays well. I apologize for the video quality in the game there. Uh, obviously, this was on the fly. I didn't have a chance to pick out a well-suited game for the setup. I would have liked to have not had to play that in full screen. Then I wouldn't have had to have turned on, cranked all the settings down. Uh, I'll leave a link to that game in the description as well. It's a great game. Don't judge it on that little bit of video. Like I said, the resolution and graphics were turned all the way down. Uh, it's a really fun racing game where you blow up the other people that you're racing against. But anyway, now we will try the regular Lumo. And it did say on here that there's an issue with disconnecting. No an issue. When powering off the wing remote, we're moving out of range. Okay. So maybe, hopefully, since we disconnected it with the software, it will recognize that we switched controllers. Uh, I will do another cut here. Okay, I'm back in split second, obviously. And I have the remote map. Uh, it accepted the controller switch, which is fine. Uh, I don't know how this will support trying to do two players, and I'm not able to test that at the moment. So that's something we'll all have to experiment with on our own. But for now, let's go back out here real quick. Do a quick lap. See how this responds. This driver does support the tilt controls, the gyroscope and stuff on the remote. So those are options as well.
that's a little bit better video of the game, huh? I still had the graphics and everything turned down, so that, that's why that still looked like that. But at least it ran smoother. Anyway, that was playing the game with the Wemo. So, both work well, aside from that little issue I was having with the analog sticks on the Pro Controller. But like I said, that may just be a matter of needing some more tweaking. This is the first time I even used the driver, so I will leave it up to you to experiment. And if you figure anything out, feel free to leave a comment below. And you know, as always, ask questions if you need help with setting anything up. This was really straightforward. I just literally installed the driver, didn't even have to reboot or anything. It just worked. Uh, this should get those of you who are having issues with the Toshiba drivers taken care of and hopefully the developer of this driver will run a Kickstarter to get a signature certificate so that we don't have to run this in test mode because I would love to be able to just use my controllers natively. Anyway, that's all for this video. Until next time guys, later.